How would you like to join a team to mastermind a prison break? Or hunt for pirate treasure? Or perhaps a weirder adventure? If that sounds like fun, then escape rooms might be for you. In this video, you'll learn all about this popular immersive entertainment, where it came from, what it's like, and how to choose and succeed in your first escape room experience. Stick around to the very end, my friends. Let's get started. Escape rooms are one of many topics I'd like to make videos about here on Curious XP. We're just getting started, so please help our channel grow by hitting that subscribe button down below. Here's the basic formula of an escape room. You and a team of players enter a room packed with puzzles and clues designed to test your skills and your wits. You have 60 minutes to escape. Succeed and you win. Fail, you'll probably still have fun. But at their core, escape rooms aren't really about escaping a room. It's about being in the middle of a cool, immersive environment and giving you a chance to test your skills. It's about making you feel like you're playing a video game in real life. Which is, incidentally, exactly where this all started. Escape rooms do draw influences from older forms of immersive entertainment like haunted houses and murder mystery dinner parties. But escape rooms as an industry owe their existence, and even their name, to a particular kind of video game. Back in the early 2000s, free browser-based flash games were all the rage. But internet connections being what they were in those days, the games themselves had to be pretty simple and streamlined. Emerging from those constraints, the escape game was born. A cavalcade of these point-and-click games about escaping things came roaring in between 2005 and 2007, with titles like Escape the Car, Escape the Bomb, and, of course, escape the room. It wasn't long before the thought occurred. What if we built an escape room in the real world? In 2008, a Japanese company called Real Escape Game was the first to do so. And within four years, escape rooms had come to Europe and America. Escape rooms are still a new, cutting-edge form of entertainment, barely a decade old, but players are always thirsty for something new, and so all kinds of new adventures are being built. What do players actually do in the escape room? Well, the most common things are solving puzzles and searching. Solving puzzles is the heart of gameplay in escape rooms. Escape rooms are filled with strings of puzzles that often connect into one final puzzle, a meta puzzle that gives you the combination to the lock that opens the door to the next room. Escape rooms aren't usually just one room, they're often two or three. And searching is the other aspect. The richly detailed set is filled with little bits of information, sometimes hidden in plain sight, other times tucked hidden in surprising spots. Searching and solving are always there, but there can also be physical dexterity challenges or even full body physical challenges. Some rooms add characters played by actors you need to interact with to get the information you need. Escape rooms come with some built-in assumptions, but many creators are now shaking those assumptions up and they're telling all kinds of different stories as well. Escape rooms in the early days got away without having much of a story. You're in a place and you need to escape. Variations on that classic theme are still around. Escaping a prison, or an ancient Egyptian tomb, or a serial killer's lair. But plenty of escape room makers have started shaking up the escape formula, asking players to do other kinds of things. Diffuse a bomb in time, create a zombie vaccine before it's too late, or plan an assassination, or a heist. There's all kinds of escape rooms out there, it's just a matter of finding the right one for you and your group. Let's talk about how you can pick the right escape room. The first step to choosing an escape room is assembling your team. Now, escape rooms will have different capacities, often around 10. However, you'll find that most of the time, about half of that capacity is the ideal number, five or six. 
Look at what's available in your area and talk it over with your group. You'll want to pay attention to the difficulty rating and the theme. Now the difficulty rating is somewhat subjective, but it helps to know what you're getting yourself into. The theme is what's really important. You're going to have more fun if you're excited about the kind of adventure you're going to be going on. Pay attention to any strong negative reactions in your group. For example, if somebody doesn't want a horror game, then they don't want to be menaced by a serial killer. There's plenty of other options out there. And another thing that'll help you pick the right escape room is looking at reviews. You will find reviews of escape rooms on Google and Yelp, but it helps to go to a dedicated site that reviews escape rooms. You'll find plenty of examples like this. Check out Room Escape Artist in the US and Escape the Review in Europe and the UK. I liked the community reviews of World of Escapes. Better yet, if you know any escape room enthusiasts, ask them. People are always going to be your best resource. So you've picked out your room and you're ready for your first escape room experience. What's it going to be like? Well, if you're like me, you're going to be a little nervous about not knowing. So why don't I tell you what it was like to go on my first escape room experience, which actually wasn't that long ago. First, I rounded up a group of friends I played Dungeons and Dragons with. We already had a team dynamic. Then I asked an escape room enthusiast friend where to go. She recommended Red Fox Escapes in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and their museum heist escape room called The Heist. Since myself and several friends have worked in museums, we were all in on the theme. There was a waiting room with a few things to play with, but we didn't have much time to kill before our time slot was up. We met our game master. The Game Master is the staff member that guides you through the whole experience. They'll give you an introduction explaining the story and rules, and they'll be available to give you hints throughout your experience. For the heist, our GM explained the story. We were going to be breaking into the museum to steal a priceless diamond. Then he led us into the room, closed the door, and the timer began. Now our team was all beginners, but we were a pretty smart bunch. We'd prepared ourselves with some of the tips I'll go over in the next section. We all played a part and we clipped through, rounding up our tools, disabling alarms, finding the secrets hidden in the museum exhibits, and finally arriving at a neat finale, which I won't spoil here. Suffice it to say, we captured our prize. We finished with only a few minutes left to spare, and we're already talking about what escape room we want to visit next. Thanks to the folks at Red Fox for letting me bring my camera, by the way. If you're ever in Massachusetts, be sure to check them out. And finally, let me walk you through some of the tips that helped us succeed in our first escape room. Tip number one is focus on teamwork. There's two ways you can shoot yourself in the foot by not working well as a team. One is to have everyone grouped around the same puzzle, wasting your time solving it together instead of using your advantage of numbers. But the other problem you can run into is having everyone running around in their own bubble, not sharing information and not cooperating. So do divide and conquer, but make sure that you do so with communication. Announce everything you see that seems significant. Announce the puzzles that you're working on. Cooperation is key, as is communication. Tip number two is to take on roles. For example, to coordinate your teamwork, it helps to have someone play the role of a manager, just to keep their eyes on the bigger picture and help direct people who aren't sure what to do at a given moment. I ended up falling into this role largely because I'm kind of loud. It can also help to have someone be a props master to keep track of the puzzle solving objects you find around the room, keep track of where they are, so that if you ever need a key or a specific kind of thing, you know who to ask and you don't have to spend time searching for something that's already been found. Tip number four, know your strengths, ask for help. Have a conversation with your team about what everyone's good at. I know, for example, that I'm not good at mental math. So if I come across a number puzzle, I'm going to call someone else over to help. You'll learn more about everybody's strengths and weaknesses as you play more escape rooms together, but keep this in mind and don't be afraid to call someone else in. Tip number four, don't overthink it. Yes, escape rooms can be devious, but they're designed to be beaten. So use Occam's razor. 
If you see a potential solution that's simple, try it before you go looking for something more complicated. If you're getting stuck, talk it through with another player. Half the time, you'll find that simply explaining the problem makes you realize the solution. And tip number five is listen to your game master. In the beginning, the introduction will give you a lot of useful information. It often includes tips that steer you away from some of the common pitfalls if you're paying attention. And as the game proceeds, they'll always be around to give you hints. Don't be afraid to use hints. If you're getting stuck and frustrated, it's better to take that hint. And besides, game masters are pros. They know how to nudge you in the right direction without robbing you of the satisfaction of getting to that aha moment. And those are some of the things that helped us on our first escape room. Are you an escape room pro? If so, do you have any tips for me? I'd love to hear your wisdom in the comments down below. That's it for me. I think it's about time now for me to escape this video. I better get started on that. See you next time. And stay curious, my friends.